Hello folks, I hope that you're having just a great and safe day today. Today I'll take a look at my final story that I'm going to be reviewing for you. It's actually my favorite story from here. It's called Gimli's Songs. It's written by Charles Saunders, who's my favorite person that I, I discovered from this. It's written in the 80s, and it is a, a sword and sorcery st story set in a sort of fictional Africa. Um, Charles Saunders is my, my favorite discovery from this, and I've already done a deep dive into him already. We're going to be taking a look at this this collection, Amaro. I might also take a look at Amaro 2, The Quest for Kush. Uh, and, and, and he's got a couple of other collections I've already ordered from Amazon. This is my favorite, this is my favorite guy I've discovered so far from this collection. I really enjoy him. He's such a good writer. Uh, he's so gifted. What he does is he specializes in writing sort of that sort of next level Conan. Imagine if uh, a sword and sandal was set on Africa, uh, on, on a fictional Africa where you have your sort of lo local, your normal low levels of magic, but the occasional magic here and there uh, that happens in a story, uh, and, and it's it's treated with with respect when it happens, and you're adventuring in these these places. Uh, and following characters, and in this case, you're following a character who's a female warrior uh, from a, a, a tribe that is heavily respected, um, and where she is like, you, you don't, you don't mess with her. She's one of the best that are out there. She reminded me of that uh, female character from Black Panther, actually. Um, the, the one who's the head of the sort of bodyguards in general. Um, she, she reminded me actually a lot of that character uh, from Black Panther. Um, but um, she is strong, she is powerful, you do not mess with her. And, uh, she, and, and you're going to follow her along. She takes out a few uh, local um, uh, bad guys. Uh, she's riding this, this nasty bull, it's awesome. Uh, she takes out a few local bad guys uh, who are trying to attack her. And then uh, she'll come across this guy named Gimli, who is a bard that lives in the, the that lives in the local area, who plays uh, for uh, for famous kings and barons um, and, and local sort of chiefs uh, and that sort of thing, um, and, and travels from place to place. And then they'll they'll encounter each other, and that's about 40% of the way through the short story. So I'll, I'll leave you to, to it. It's less than 20 pages. It'll take you, you know, probably tw 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 probably took me a half an hour to read it. Um, I, I do enjoy it. Um, this collection has mostly science fiction in it, uh, but this is one of the few stories that's not. It's the only true fantasy story that's in that's in the speculative fiction uh, collection of you know some of the, some of the best. And this was written in, in the early '80s. Um, Charles Saunders is a guy who you should have heard about, but you didn't. He's a Miss Classic, which is one of the things that this channel is obsessed with. And I love the fact that I have discovered him, uh, and that's why I've taken such a deep dive into him. I'll talk more about him when I do my Amaro review, my first Amaro review, because that's because those are the Amaro stories. But basically, what happened was is he was considered this great up-and-coming writer in the '70s. He was writing for these different magazines, publishing short stories and novellas for him, and one of them got published in a best fantasy of uh, in, in the seventies by Lynn Carter, I think the year that I was born, 76. And, um, he actually got a license from Ace Books, uh, to publish his, um, uh, they, they saw, Hey, this guy's a good writer. Uh, he's not really coming out. So he, so he got, I'm sorry, Daw Books rather. Um, so he got a, a contract to publish a, a collection, which is the Amaro collection, which has been reprinted now twice since then. And, and he launches it, but there are some issues that happened that caused it to be delayed. Uh, he was. They, they were sued by by Conan because they thought he was, or not not Conan, uh, by the estate of Edgar Rice Burroughs, uh, because they have a sort of a black Tarzan. And then this guy who's from the the African jungle is he, he he's a black Tarzan too. And so the, so because of that suit, it delayed the release of the book until the suit was resolved, um, and lost the momentum from him being you know nominated, uh, sort of sort of the best of. And that caused some delays and ultimately caused uh, some issues with with the, the book had been advertised had been marketed, but it was delayed for years. Uh, from the legal stuff, so it never got that. So for those reasons, um, because it was sued by the boroughs, the state, um, it had that main issue with, uh, it, hey, uh, it being delayed and so forth. And, and so he's, I think he's a lost classic and a lost treasure. But basically what he does is he invents a, a genre, which I think you could um, refer to as sword and soul. It's set in a sort of Africa or a myth of Africa. It's sword and sandal, low on the sorcery, high on the sword. And uh, all of his stories have a very strong sort of a like like a, like a modern taking on um, the next chapter of, of a Conan. Um, so it's not just Black Conan, um, but he's more he's he's different than Conan. 
in a lot of very important ways. Um, he's trying to find his home, he's questing for it, um, Imaro is, rather. Um, so he has this strong sense of, of, of writing. He's, he, every page drips. His first page was the best first page I read of any chapter, of, of, any, of any collection for this story in, in, in this book, just as one example. This guy is gifted, he's good, He's talented. He's got a lot of action scenes. He writes his action scenes well. Charles Saunders. He's a great, great gut writer who I think got lost to time. And I'm going to be spending some time unpacking him for you in order to, to change that. Uh, but again, this stuff was written in this story that, that I'm reading for you today. Gimli Songs was written in the mid 80s. And so there you are. I'll go ahead and stop the Charles Saunders love that I have right now for this gentleman. Um, I'll go ahead and leave it to you there. Have you read this or anything else by Charles Saunders? Um, I'll link you to this collection below if you want to pick it up and check it out and read this story. Let me know what you think about it in the, in, in the comments below or if you agree or disagree with my, my Saunders love, generally. <laughs> I'll, I'll also, uh, uh, you know, if you enjoyed this review of Gimli Songs, Feel free to hit that um, hit that subscribe button. There's going to be so many more of these reviews to follow. And finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it in this channel. Uh, we all have so many things going on and so many things happening. So the fact that you spent time watching this video is so humbling. And I really do appreciate that. Have a good one.